So we have two Pikachus on screen for this match. So Leo's yeah. also playing Pikachu here. Yeah, both of these teams have going kind of the same theory going on. Uh, Micro is going to be doing it a little bit more from the air with like a lot of uh, rising, rising and falling nares, rising and falling bears. While I'd like to see uh, Ram play a lot more grounded in turn. Like we need to see Lucina up till everybody here. Everyone. Looks, looks like we've already <laughs> split up into sort of a sortie battle and a Pikachu battle over here. <laughs> Yeah, I wonder how this is going to play out from the Pikachu side of things. Because it feels like if a Pikachu is able to establish dominance, one of the two, then it's going to be such a boon, especially on a small stage like Smashville. Uh, I know Jopone is primarily uh, does a lot better in doubles than they do in singles. We'll have to see if Leo is able to take advantage of that. Meanwhile, Micro wins the Swordy battle with that forward smash follow-up. The Sora with these... Like as I said, these big sweeping hitboxes, the ability to cover so much space is really dangerous in doubles. Absolutely. Like, you know, he's basically got Diet Kragnare, which, <laughs> if anybody knows about Kragnare, that move's not okay. <laughs> uh, and especially in a smaller states like Smashville, great. In the, uh, attempted the counter hit, though, and gets a, a potential follow up, though. The Pikachus are kind of. Sw it feels like one battle happens in, like, the corner, and the other, and the rats are consuming the rest of the stage with <laughs> quick attacks and um, just so many different uh, potential follow ups. All of these up airs coming out as well. I liked that a lot yeah. from Leo. He would have called out tech, oh, tech Roll away there. Unfortunately, uh, it was a big gamble, and Joe Pun is able to close out the stock for it. But in the interaction store, Remy able to delete one of, micro, one of uh, the Sora stocks, Micro stocks. Yeah. Again, I feel like just Ram is still playing like very, very, co uh, very, very like attempting to go air to air with things like back airs, which is great in singles. Less so good in doubles, as that's a huge turnaround. Great fastball from Ram to grab the ledge, and Micro throwing it all of his weight into that forward smash, but it ends up hitting Jopone instead. That puts Blue Team in a little bit of a hole here. Yeah, this is the advantage that they need. I think, as you're seeing, Remy is jumping quite a bit, but I think over time he needs to start adjusting and staying on the ground as much as he can. I agree. All right. I like this pressure here from uh, from Micro, though, just trying to consume a lot of space, shut down what could arguably be seen as a root of the team, but going a little bit too ham with that double jump from ledge and meeting a Lucina back air to the face. Uh, that's pretty huge here. Uh, Ram is just able to establish so much control on this uh, around this Smashville platform, avoiding a lot of Sora's follow-ups. That this forward throw is going to set up the entirety of Blue Team off stage, at least for the moment. Ooh. The battles are breaking out on the sides again. Yeah, I want to see them almost trade off a little bit here because Red Team, uh, Red Team has been doing such a good job of like taking hits, but not taking a ton of hits that have mattered. Meanwhile, Blue Team is really focused on, like, I want to win this matchup. Still, both of them got to get off the ledge here. Leo going for that up air oh, from ledge. Oh, that was <laughs> so good. That was so good. And it's a great knowledge check for any Pikachu players. If you see a Thunder, sometimes it can be extremely hard to challenge if you're not already on the ball. And there it is. Pikachu dash attack coming in clutch and closing out that game one for Red Team. The tides of that match turned so fast. I mean, it was basically even almost, it, I would say, Red Team favored, or sorry, Blue Team favored for a lot of it. And then one yeah. smash at the ledge from, from Micro and just turned the, the game completely. Yeah, it just one. It goes like, I feel like it goes to show, like, especially on a smaller, like, stage like Smashville, like, establishing control and establishing tempo can means so much for long stretches that one flaw basically set the dominoes falling into place for red team they were able to just like okay we have a stock lead time to play center stage time to play counter hit focused and just turn time to let blue team self-destruct and it worked out pretty well thus far but if there's anything we've seen with uh, with blue team is that once they're able to get their opponents to commit to the air it's over I'm running it straight back to Smashville here. I don't know if I agree, but also, like, it's not that bad. I just have a, a there's just an aversion to Fire Emblem on Smashville. <laughs> yeah, I think the Bears got a lot of mileage. Ramy was able to get a lot of edge guards, or a few edge guards with Bear that really, really matter just due to the small side blast zones. Yeah, uh, the small stage in general for that massive sword. Wow, Joe Pone dropping a stock so early. That's so unfortunate. And again, though, uh, I feel like. I feel like Micro could have gotten fair there instead, which would have uh, absolutely established the edge guard. Again, though, the up air was the consistency play. That was almost a spike from Micro. Okay. Oh, an unfortunate SD from Leo as well. 
going for the double dunk there. That's so. Uh, that's a pretty big risk to play here, but both Pikachus kind of going a little bit ham, a little bit early, kind of having leaning on the control that their sortie partner establishes, but one is being juggled, and the other is dropping off. That is Leo going deep for that Blue Thunder and is able to close out the, uh, a second stock on Jopone. Such a huge swing. So much of this match is also occurring right at the edge of the stage. I mean, there's a whole center stage that isn't really being used. It's being dominated by a giant sword that Lucina has just been sitting here with, uh, finding hit follow-ups and, and confirming off of any of Leo's uh, establishes of scrambles. It's so good. Yeah, Leo's doing a great job in these other situations. Great parry on the part of Micro, though. Gotta force, uh, gotta force Ram off stage, and they do so covering with the Thundaga. God, <laughs> it's just lightning. <laughs> so we've got, we got Thundaga, we've got Thunders. It's it's all over the place. Yeah, I mean, the voltage in this match is pretty insane. Except Lucy, poor Lucina over here with this one piece of metal. <laughs> missing the uh, missing any of these Nair follow-ups. Leo not giving the air dodge, but that's a good, pretty good blizzard. I feel like there are so many moments where Jopone will sort of like run and try to help out Micro in the interactions with Leo, but we'll just get caught in one of Micro's moves. I feel like Blue Team is playing on different tempos. Like, Jopone is feeling the, the weight of being at last stock 94, while Micro is trying to, uh, trying to follow up off of it, but more present towards like stage control and controlled edge guards, while Jopone is sometimes just going in. Finally, Blue Team taking a little bit of a moment to relax, and Leo's stock drops for it. Keeping this game still extremely close. A good aerial sweep out of shield, keeping things uh, keeping things stable. Sometimes all you need to do is play reactive and reacting to the dash attack from Leo in order to get that fourth throw. Micro doing a great job of just trying to maintain his uh, maintain this stock like his life depends on it. Yeah, both of them are playing a lot more sort of defensive, slowing the game down and really trying to take control of what's going on. That was almost a sick follow-up on the part of Joe Pone, seeing that uh, Sora up to having plenty of time to react to it. Oh, hits! <laughs> he hit the Ram throw. with the other! <laughs> wow, I mean, what an absolute swing here. Like, this is basically just an even position. If they're able to get this stock on on uh, on Leo, like, whoever, whichever Pikachu drops first, he could, be, could seal the game. Holy moly. If both the Pikachu is a high percent, the Sword is sort of in a somewhat comfortable place. Yeah. But Jopone is trying to go for an edge guard there, and instead, Micro is able to get the follow up. And is suddenly, Jopone at 150, you need to lay back here. Instead, just quick attack into center. I like that play on the ground, though. Ram trying to call out a jump, and now you've got a 2v1 on the edge. This is where you love to be. Very oh, nice. Great right up till there, called the jump. All right, now it's just a 1v1 here, but I'll be honest, I really think Sora has so much going for them in this matchup. They have uh, better ways to extend some of their pressure while um, Ram is going to play a character that is reliant on control of the stage, of which they don't exactly have right now, but they are able to find some of it with that back air. Can they stop Sora out? No, they can't. A little bit of a misdirection on some of these. Missing the up smash after, though. Ooh, it's getting tight here. We are on Smashville, though. One edge guard could do it with one wolf place back air from Rami. But it's not looking too great right now. Yeah, not to mention the amount of rage here on, on uh, for Rami here, Jay. Ooh. Ooh, with Depth not a huge punish. Yeah. Good go low and the stall as well. Have to be careful with some of the spacings, and they are even more so. That Nair gonna set up for another ledge trap. Uh-oh. We've seen this counter come out twice now. Let's see if maybe Rami will try to call it out the next time he throws Micro off stage. With a double down tilt. Yeah, you just dash away from that thunder. Don't even risk it. Gets the fair again. And going deep. That counter was scouted, but oh. so was the combo. The counter off stage after baiting, uh, baiting a low recovery by just drifting there super sneakily and knowing a Sonic Blade 1 always sends either left or right. If he goes to the left, like we'll see it, we'll let it full play out. Like sees that counter, knows they have to aerial sweep into side B. And such pristine spacing. And that's yeah, Sora's Sora's gonna eat that one a lot. But like <laughs> I think it's right it's right here. So they have the counter, all that stuff. Once in this spot, Sora has to side B. But you can only uh, only has to side B to recover. Can only go one of two directions. That arrow is terrible. But <laughs> this drop zone counter is so free from 
Rami because they can drop zone counter. If they whiff, Sora takes a long time to recover anyway. They can reset themselves back to ledge really smoothly. And if they go this way, what are they going to do? They're going to go this and then this, right? Like, you get back to ledge, that's a free backer. Such a perfect checkmate. And at 156, that amount of rage, the max rage, super gone. Yeah, I love seeing these moments in doubles, especially to let the player shine in their abilities in singles. I know yeah. Rami, like, loves his edge guards, and there's a moment where we got to see a little bit of that shine. Yeah, it looks very really good. It looks very practiced, I yeah. feel like. Like, that's just something he could do in his sleep. And...